Moving to the River Murray Netball Association now, and there were some big results over the weekend, and our correspondent Hannah Lollers here with me to fill us in on all the details. How are you, Hannah? Yeah, great. Thanks, Dan. Great to be with you. Great to have you here as always, and we'll get straight into it with the biggest blowout of the round, which took place at quarter to one last Saturday, which was Taylor Bend getting a big win over the Kuron Cats, 64-23. to And you were at this game, so can you give us your insights uh, firsthand? Yeah, I was. Uh, first quarter was pretty even. Um, I think Taylor was up by four at quarter time. Um Good second quarter, and then Taylor really put um, their pedal to the metal um, and the last two quarters, and sort of they were both 20 goal quarters to them. So, um, Shauna Chaplin, who has actually played for um, a lot of her juniors at um, Meningi, uh, she's now with Taylor, and she um, had half a game in wing defence and half a half game in wing attack, and then ran into wing defence and just played a ripper. She was she was fabulous. Um, the whole Talon team really came together. Um, Claire Pitt, tall in defence. Um, yeah, Amanda Densley in defence. So, yeah, that they were really happy, the girls coming off court. Uh, for Cats, as usual, Holly Hughes ran the centre, had a great battle with Matilda Hughes. The Hughes is not related, um, but both ran the centre. It was a good contest and Holly played well, but she just couldn't bring her team up for um, for a win for that one. So, yeah, tell them, uh, get their fourth win for the season and had a good night to celebrate. All right, unfortunate loss there for the Cats, but good to hear they had that good first quarter. Hopefully they can start stringing together four quarters pretty soon. Mally Storm had a good win over the Ramblers, 55-40. to 40. How did this one go down for the Storm? Yeah, so they so on last time they met results, um, Storm increased their margin in their win here. Um, and I think um, they picked up Storm have picked up to Neil Gray. Uh, we've talked about her whether she was going to come out on an ongoing basis. She's um, a country girl but plays Premier League down in Adelaide in um, a goalie, and yeah, she's been a great asset. Uh, and Lily Weckett, um, another young peak girl who was home for the weekend, also played for the Storm and, yeah, just um, too good over the four quarters. Uh, Helene Altman in um, goals for the Ramblers um, did her best and when she got the ball um, was pretty accurate, uh, but defensively uh, the Storm kept it off her a fair bit. So, yeah, Storm happily running away with that one. All right, Storm, keeping in touch with the top four, pulling level with the Southern Suns as they had a loss. They went down to the Imperials by 12 goals, 59 to 47. Nice high-scoring affair. Yeah, high-scoring, and I think the Suns would be actually pretty, you know, reasonably happy with that um, result. They halved, um, last time they played, it was a 23-goal margin. They actually took the first quarter, uh, so they were in the lead after quarter time, and that's when Imps, I think, really started to apply the pressure um, in the second quarter and pegged that back and um, took the lead. Uh, for um, for Imps, Lucy Hartness, who is um, a delightful young um, player for Imps, she's a defensive player. She's all over the court. She's sort of a bit like an energizer bunny. Um, she played a really good game, and then the experience of Olivia Bolt, who's you know got decades of experience um, as well. Just their pressure um, got them over the line um, by that twelve goals. As you, also as usual for the Suns, Liv Clark in defence played really well. But yeah, I think Muriel Walter, the coach of the Suns. Um, we'll we'll be pleased with that result and know that some finals that they can match it um, quarter by quarter if they need to. All right, so a good result there for the Suns. The Imps have only lost once all year, so it's no easy task beating them. It's no easy task even coming within 12 goals, so a good game there. And then to the closest match of the round, nothing within single digits this week, a bit of a week of semi-blowouts, but this one was Manham by 11 goals, 53-42 to over Javois. And once again, the team on the losing end here probably would be pretty happy with their efforts. Yeah, 11 goals to Manham. Um, it shows the class that Jervoice does have. And I just, yeah, 
aren't getting the results on the board, but I think um, collectively they should be reasonably happy with how they're playing. Uh, this was a straight seven versus seven, um, seven aside. There's no changing happening on the court. Um, and, yeah, just the experience of Manham, uh, that defensive end of Kelly McGorman and Tracy Davenet, and then some really good shooting um, up the other end from Phoebe. And Friday, uh, just Courtney Asset again, had a really good match. Um, but, yeah, just couldn't get there for Jervois. Um Interesting to see, yeah, how Jervois go this week, though. We'll take a look straight to Jervois's game this week. They are playing the Kurong Cats, so a good opportunity for both teams here to potentially get a win and certainly a good chance to practice some close game situations. Yeah, so last time these met, the Cats got their win for the season to date. It was two goals. It was really close. Having seen these teams, I would be expecting Jervois to win this one. Um, I think if you get within 11 goals of Manham, um, that's an indicative that you probably have a stronger team. Last time the Cats played, they had a couple of fill-in players. So I think that was the difference um, that week. So I'm expecting the table to be turned and Jervois to get um, a win. And wouldn't surprise me if it was sort of by 10 to 15. All right, well, they'll have to contain Holly Hughes, of course. I think you've given her a shout-out as best on ground every single week for the Cats, so I'm sure they'll put a lot of work into slowing her down, and if they can do that, it will probably go a long way towards getting the win. And we've also got Maipo taking on the Mallee Storm next weekend. This one should be a good game. The Storm looking to get a win to move into that top four, but Maipo, just the one loss for the season. Yeah, so Maipo had the week off last week as well. Um, last time these teams met, it was a 16-goal win to Maipo. Um, our Storm will have Tanil Gray, um, who is you know really strong shooter, um, but I expect Maipo will be too strong. Uh, I don't think it'll be much different to uh, when Storm played Imps last time. I think that's sort of the kind of margin and that was sort of that 18 goals so I am expecting yeah that to be about a 15 goal win to my post. Two more games to get through the Ramblers are taking on the Southern Suns home game for the Ramblers so are they any chance to cause any sort of an upset here? I'm expecting Suns to get this one um, I don't think um, Ramblers have enough strength to get over the line this week. Um, I think the Suns too will be looking um, and mindful of percentage. It's getting pretty tight for that fourth position. And whilst uh, percentage, it could come down to percentage, um, I think, yeah, the Suns will be trying to to get a a good win on the board. Last time they met, it was only seven goals. Um, I'm expecting it to be just a few more, probably more that 10 to 15 this week to the Suns. And this one's probably shaping up to be the match of the round. Manham hosting the Imperials. First versus third. Like we said, Imps just the one loss for the year. Manham only two losses. But based on current form, you would think the Imps would win. It was probably closer than they would have liked last week for Manham. So do you think Manham can bounce back after probably not their best performance of the year? Or will it be a win for the Imps? Uh, I think Imps will be hard to beat. Um, I think Imps last week having, yeah, that tighter one, uh, I think they'll be um, mindful um, of needing to to get those four quarters, particularly against Manham, who have such a good, strong defensive combination. Um, last time they played each other, it was 20 goals. Um, I'm expecting it to potentially be um, around that or 15 to 20 goals. I'm thinking that Imps will get that one um, over um, in Manham, and Caelan has the bye this week. All right, so that's our round 14 action. Just four weeks to go after this one, so we're getting into the business end, and these games are starting to matter just that little bit extra. Looking forward to seeing how the results play out this weekend. Enjoy the netball this weekend, Hannah, and we'll catch up with you for more results next week. Fabulous, Dan. Okay, happy sport for everyone.